This is the Dremel VRT 1 and 1 5th, a vacuum powered rotary tool that Dremel's been selling. It connects to your shop vac, and the idea behind it is it's a Dremel tool that uses the vacuum power from your vacuum to turn and also collects all the dust from whatever you're cutting, grinding, or working on. That's the marketing cell, at least. Uh, I'm going to go through basically what's included when you purchase it and then do a couple of tests of different types of applications people would use a Dremel for, in particular using the bits that came with it, and see if it performs at all. If you've seen AVE's video on this already, you probably know how he feels about it. What a piece of shit. I'm hoping I can maybe show something redeeming from this tool, one application where it's actually useful, so let's just see what happens. All right, so what comes in the package? The actual body of the tool itself, the dust shroud, collet wrench, two coarse sanding drums, a fine sanding drum, a high-speed steel cutter engraver thing, and a drywall bit, and a little info card. In addition to that, since I have a full-size normal Dremel, I'm going to be using some of the accessories from that to test this thing out. And I am going to try to cut some metal with it and shoot some sparks. That's not really recommended because you don't want sparks to go back into your vacuum and explode or catch on fire. So don't do what Donnie Don't does in this video. But I wanted to see if it could even do it. This is the shop vac I'm going to be using for the test. It says that you need at least 110 CFM of air from your vacuum. This one, based on the shop vac PDF, does 190 CFM, so that should be more than enough. If this thing ends up being not total shit, that might be one reason why some people have had a bad experience with it if they hooked it up to too wimpy of a shop vac. And since my shop vac is a two and a half inch hose shop vac, and this tool is designed to work with a one and a quarter inch shop vac, I had to buy this goofy adapter thing. If it starts causing problems because of the airflow, I might actually cut it off because the smaller section at the end is actually for a one inch hose than one and a quarter inch. I'm not sure, but if this ends up blocking too much of the airflow, I'll, I'll probably cut it off and maybe have to redo one or two of the shots. Hopefully it won't come to that though, because it's just an added pain. For the first simple test, let's just see how it does sanding some wood. It's being sold in stores right next to all the Pinewood Derby car stuff, and I think they're kind of trying to target Pinewood Derby car builders with this. So, piece of pine, let's just see how it sands. Already, with this huge hose on here, it's kind of a pain in the ass and loses a lot of the advantage of using a Dremel, which is that they're light and easy to maneuver. Probably be a little better with a quarter inch, or one and a quarter inch hose, but... Having a giant hose hanging off of your Dremel already kind of sucks. Here goes. Well, that didn't work at all. It stops almost as soon as you touch the wood. And I can tell that it did do a little bit of sanding because there's sawdust on the table, which is kind of the whole point of this thing is to vacuum it all up. So it barely did any work, and what work it did, it didn't clean up. Like I said earlier, I'm a little suspicious of this end sticking out into the airflow, so I'm going to cut that off real quick and see if it makes a difference. Okie dokie. That should be a little better, I think. It's not going to stick out as far. The opening is still pretty small, though. If you can find a better adapter than this, and for some reason you're giving this thing a try, well, maybe try to find a better adapter than this. Here goes round two.
it's maybe a little bit less gutless, but it is still very gutless. You you really couldn't do anything useful with this. Maybe balsa wood you could do. I mean, you could use it for the bridge building project or something. Anyway, so it fails at sanding. Let's move on to the next thing. I should mention quick that I'm having the same problem with this as I have with my full, you know, my normal electric Dremel, where a lot of times the bits just get stuck in the collet, and when you try to unscrew it, the whole thing comes out, and then you have to, you know, knock on the bit or punch it through in the back to get it free. Then you have to put the collet back on the drill or back on the tool. It's just kind of a pain, and it almost feels like the tools that are designed for this collet aren't designed for this collet. Next test. I'm going to use this little ball engraver bit to see if I could engrave initials into a tool in case you didn't want somebody trying to walk off with your expensive Harbor Freight vice grip clampy deal. Surprisingly, it actually kind of works for that. It, I really couldn't get it to stop. It engraved something. I, I mean, it's not real deep, but you could read it. Uh, I do see a lot of sparkle on the table, though, so I don't think it, the dust collection worked on that either. But... I guess if you need only an engraver that's really unwieldy and cumbersome and difficult to turn on and off, maybe this is an option. Speaking of which, I don't know if you noticed there, but when you're actually done using it and you've got this big hose over your shoulder or under your arm and you're trying to reach up onto the tool to spin that ring, and it's, it's unwieldy to use. And it's not, you don't have a nice on off to just stop the blade from spinning. You have to reach up onto the tool and find that ring. It almost feels a little dangerous to me that you're trying to get a handhold to turn this thing and you, you kind of get pretty close to the blade. So I would say that ergonomics on it are pretty bad too. Besides the hose, the way you turn it on and off is kind of crappy and weird. Yet again, the bit comes out stuck in the collet. This is the one I've been holding out hope is actually useful and legit. The drywall bit. It's got a dust collector, which is one of the worst parts about working with drywall is the dust. And drywall is pretty easy to cut, so I'm hoping this bit can actually do anything. So... If it can at least do this, I would say it's not a completely wasteless pile, useless pile, because you could still use this to, you know, plunge cut and just cut out a new outlet, especially inside the house where you don't want to make a big mess, if the dust collection works. Big if. And, yeah, this is live over here. I just felt behind here. There's no wires, nothing. It's just a void right here, so I'm just going to cut a little arch here, and I have to repair all this anyway since I did some wiring of outlets. So let's see what happens.
complete gutlessness. <sighs> yeah. It looks like this thing is pretty worthless. Even just letting the tool's speed do the work, just basically touching it to the drywall, it immediately starts to slow down and doesn't make any progress. It, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't have enough balls to do anything. And this is with 190 CFM air, 190 CFM vacuum. It calls for 110 CFM vacuum. How much worse would it be? Somewhat, at least. Well, I guess time for the last test, the fun one, the sparky one. <gasps> it's been murdered. Sort of. I'm running my shop vac headless, or I guess head full, uh, just on the off chance that this thing actually throws a spark, and then it makes it all the way down the tube in there and either ignites the filter cartridge or blows up some sawdust dust. So just in case, I'm just going to run it like this. Uh, it should be fine for a minute to see when this thing most likely fails. All right, here we go. No, we're not going. I am dumb. Dumb. I didn't think that through. Okay, option two, cleaning the shop vac. Okay, here goes the final test. Let's see if we can shoot a spark. Well, it was very anemic, but, and there is, there is no chance you are cutting through this with that, but it did shoot a spark. I don't know if you could see it, so I'm going to do some camera magic so you can see this thing really shoot a spark. This is a composite shot. I took a long exposure of about 60 seconds and just kept tapping it against the piece of steel and got it to shoot a bunch of sparks. Then I overlaid that over a static photo of it, making it I mean, it, it is, basically, I'm showing that it is actually removing some metal, just not a lot, and it's really hard to see in the bright shop. But in the dark, you can tell it is doing something, just nothing useful. Well, I guess that wraps this up. This thing is useless, at least for the tasks I've shown in this video. It did not do any of them to any acceptable or useful level. The accessories that it came with don't make any sense because it can't do the things that the accessories want you to do, except maybe for engraving. But you can buy engravers for amazingly cheaper than this thing, which was 9 bucks at Lowe's. And they're way smaller and they're way more dexterous. They're easier to use. I mean, trying to engrave with this huge thing with the hose attached to a shop vac is ridiculous. Uh, if you have some task that uses extremely low speed, uh, low bit speeds, I don't know what's out there. I mean, there's a million attachments for Dremel tools. Everything shown in this video needs more speed and more guts than this thing can provide, but maybe you have some weird low speed, low drag task that your current electric Dremel tool is too convenient for and you want to have a giant hose hanging off that doesn't actually pick up any of the debris. If that's the case, pick one of these up. I got this one on clearance for nine bucks at Lowe's, which is several bucks more than it's worth, sadly. 
I really wanted to like, I don't know, show something with this over what AVE showed when he, you know, quickly canned it and said it's a piece of crap. But it is a piece of crap. So, yeah, I don't know what you want to do with this. I guess consider this entertainment and not really a useful review. Don't buy this. Unless, like I said, you've got some really special application. And if you have some really special application where this thing actually works... Post it in the comments. I'd be interested to know if anyone has actually had any success with this thing. It really makes me wonder about like the engineering and the marketing that went behind this. When they made the first prototype of this thing, they would have had to have known it can't do anything. It can't do the things that are on the packaging. Uh, where's the packaging? Uh, there might be too much glare, but the packaging shows you cutting drywall with it. It stalled just trying to poke through drywall. I mean, it came to a complete stop touching drywall. There is no way that you're going to be able to cut out an outlet like that. And sanding... I guess, but I really... It was super gutless. If you, if you applied any pressure at all, it came to a complete stop. So there, uh, there's no way this guy's making progress unless he's been at it for like an hour. And maybe that. Maybe you could use the engraver bit to take paint off of a pot that you've painted for your latest Pinterest entry. But, you know, this should have been stopped probably way early on in program development. The engineers working on it should have said, the math doesn't make sense. There's not enough force. It's not going to work. They should have told marketing it's going to be completely incapable of delivering on any any of your marketing claims. Not even, you know, you're embellishing a little bit. It can't do anything. So I, I kind of would really like to hear from Dremel, like, what were they thinking with this? What did they think would happen? Do they actually really have success with this thing? I mean, I... Like I showed earlier, I tried to get a vacuum that is way over the top, 190 CFM versus the 110 that this requires. It's it's not an air problem, and that's really the only, that's where all of the energy comes from is the air. So this couldn't vacuum anything up. It couldn't cut anything. It couldn't sand anything. It could lightly engrave, and it couldn't cut, but they don't claim that it can cut. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I wish I could hear from Dremel, what's the deal? I know they wouldn't say anything like that because they'd be going against their own marketing, but yeah. So this is a real crapper. It's actually not that badly built for being so useless, and it's kind of sad. I mean, it is kind of a good idea. Being able to cut drywall... With the vacuum attached so you don't make a mess that is a good idea but it just doesn't work so well yeah I, I guess hopefully somebody got something out of that um yeah i guess see you guys later I guess before I go, I should say, I do have one idea of what I could try to make this thing work. It's along the lines of uh, more power. And if I do get it working, I'll make a follow-up video. It might also explode. And if I catch it exploding, I'll make a video. But I probably won't be videotaping when it explodes. I'll probably be ducking. So there may be no follow-up. But maybe watch for this. It could be coming. <laughs> <laughs>